Say you want to compute the moments like mean and variance from a moment generating function like I've showed you in problems 46 to 62 then there's a case where it's easier to work with the log of the MGF it's easier to work with the log of MGF it simplifies the calculation for the moments if your MGF begins with the number E so let's look at this result so let okay let's consider this log of MGF then we want to prove that this is true now this function the log of MGF is called a cumulant generating function and then what this is saying is that the derivative of the cumulating generating function what we'll call the first cumulant computed at zero is the mean and the second cumulant computed at zero is the variance okay well first of all does it make sense to talk about the log of the MGF to make sense that at all this MGF must take values bigger than zero because remember you can't take log of values zero and less than zero okay well let's recall definition this MGF is the mean expected value of some function of X and it's the e to this TX and e to any real number is always going to be positive so the mean of this guy must be positive if you want to look at another way let's consider that x is discrete random variable then this is what you're computing over all values of x then e to the tx I already said is going to be bigger than zero for all any tx because it's just a number and probability computer its possible values is always going to be bigger than zero so the product is always going to be bigger than zero and you're adding some of positive numbers uh, just in case any of you kind of just want a reminder I'm just going to just do it I've got a pen here see x I call e x looks like and it's asymptote zero so it doesn't touch zero it's going towards zero so that's this guy is never zero or less than zero alright so we want to prove this and then examples to show you the magic of it it's just a small result but yeah let's do it so we're looking at the derivative of this guy first derivative first and we don't want to work directly with like these guys because it looks like a mess you stick a log in front of this it's a log of a mass of a, of a sum a log of this you know we don't want to we don't really care about this we just want to see that this is some function the MGF is some function of t so using the chain rule on this then it's function of a function so it's 1 over this guy which is okay because we know that MGF is bigger than 0 so you're not going to be divided by 0 and uh, times by the derivative of m which is this okay so just put dash there to note the derivative i.e. dm by dt so that's the first cumulant now I want to compute it at zero I want to show that that's equal to the mean mu so let's set t to zero then oh then I've got the answer how well look, let's look at the bottom I'm claiming that m0 is 1 well look at this so substitute in the definition that t is 1 a uh, 0 sorry t is 0 so that's e to the 0 which is 1 and the expected value of a constant is a constant so it's 1 and you already know by properties of MGF that the uh, first derivative of the MGF I, it computed at 0 is the mean is the first raw moment okay next the second derivative of, or the second cumulant the second cumulant take this guy and do the derivative again now it's entirely up to you. You can use the quotient rule or the product rule. They're equivalent. I'm using the product rule. Okay, so uh, I'm going to write this down and do a derivative of this. Plus, write this down and do a derivative of this. But then that's a chain rule. Okay, minus one comes down. Take one off the minus one. It's minus two and times the derivative of 
this guy and then tidy it up like that and then we're going to repeat the same thing we now know that m0 is 1 substitute for uh, t0 and this guy calculated at 0 is the second raw moment and we've already done this from above so we just substitute those in and there you go and that is the expression for the variance of our random variable. Now let's go to a couple of examples. Um, well, actually, it, well, let's consider a case where x is Poisson, the parameter lambda. Uh, I proved in problem, some problem that uh, that the MGF is this. Uh, let me look it up. It's problem 67, 68. Okay, and in problem 55. I use the cumulant generating function to show the mean and the variance. So um, you can go and look at that. If we were to use the usual MGF method to compute the moments, you can see that here we're going to require the chain rule. Okay? If we work with a cumulant generating function, we just take the log that's gone straight away. So we just work on this guy. It simplifies things. We're not we're not using the chain rule then in that case for that problem. Right. This is one I'm going to work through. Um, x follows normal distribution. I showed in problem 62 how to derive the MGF for this, which is this thing right here. Now you see it begins with an E, so the number E. So if I take, use the cumulant generator function, you can see it's going to take natural logs and it's going to go. Let's do that. So here it is. Take the natural logs. That's gone, so leave me with this and then use the result. So the first cumulant would be this guy here and then the mean we already proved is the first cumulant computed at t0 okay that's gone then that's uh, sigma squared times 0 it's just that done and you can you can see how quick that was right so if I didn't do that if I used the normal MGF method I'd be again using the chain rule on this okay so that's just a small result showing you that sometimes it's easier to compute moments using the log of the MGF than working directly on the MGF.